In the very early days of Magic, some aspects of the game didn't fall into place straight away. One such aspect was the game's balance. The early days of Magic are filled with examples of broken cards that probably never should have seen the light of day. Infamous cards like Ancestral Recall and Fast Bond, as well as more recent mistakes like Arkham's Astrolabe and, of course, Oko. These cards are considered broken because of their mechanics. In other words, the things they do. But on occasion, a series of cards, all printed with the same mechanic, will prove that a particular keyword is broken beyond repair. But does that mean that all these cards are mistakes? Today, we dive into the past to examine the perfect storm. For the not yet initiated, Storm is a keyword first printed in the Scourge expansion, way back in 2003. Cards with Storm copy themselves when you cast them, with an additional copy created for each other spell cast before it this turn. Therefore, the goal with cards like Hunting Pack was to play as many other spells beforehand as you possibly could, and then finish off your turn by making a ton of tokens. The issue is this, there is no upper limit to Storm. With the help of a few rituals and cheap card draw spells, it can be pretty easy to generate a Storm count, that's the nickname for the number of spells cast this turn, of 20 or more. Then all you need is a grape shot to close things out. Killing your opponent for one red mana? Seems pretty good. Perhaps a little too good. Decks taking advantage of this interaction have been staples of both modern and legacy, and the only reason they're possible at all is because of finisher cards like Grape Shot and Tendrils of Agony. These days, the designers at Wizards of the Coast consider Storm to be a huge mistake. It is literally the poster child of problem mechanics. There's a scale named after Storm to measure how likely it is that any given keyword will return. Popular mechanics like cycling are rated low on the storm scale, meaning they're likely to be printed again. Unpopular or overly powerful mechanics like storm are rated highly, meaning that it would take a miracle to see them return. But the storm scale doesn't mean a return is out of the question. In fact, just two years ago, a brand new storm card was printed in Modern Horizons. So the designers are clearly willing to use these mechanics when they feel the need. What the storm scale actually measures is the likelihood of a mechanics return to standard, because that's the constructed format that Wizards of the Coast is most invested in keeping balanced. Not that it always works out that way. The other thing to remember about the storm scale is that it's not intended to be comprehensive, nor is it a hard and fast rule that magic designers must stick to. For example, Madness is rated at an 8 on the storm scale, making it very unlikely to return, and yet we saw a new swath of Madness cards printed in Shadows over Innistrad. More recently, we saw the return of Snowlands in Kaldheim, a mechanic rated at a 7. Storm, as the namesake for the scale, is almost guaranteed never to return to standard. The same is true of Dredge and Affinity, both tens as well. But does that mean these mechanics should never have happened? Certainly, if you've ever played against a Storm deck, you might feel tempted to erase it from history. But of course, if we really want to remove cards from the game, there are ways to do that. Magic has a variety of ways to keep the game balanced, from format rules to answer cards like removal. But when those answers break down and so-called degenerate modern decks can win in three turns, then it's time to call in the ban list. When Wizards of the Coast elect to ban cards, they normally choose to ban one card that's the key to a particular strategy. In 2013, that card was Seething Song, which quote, was very important to the turn three wins they were trying to avoid, but not one of the cards that make this deck unique. That quote reveals the delicate balance that those in charge of bannings have to follow, or perhaps had to follow. Like it or not, cards with Storm are a part of Magic's history, and given the option, they will always ban an enabler card over a payoff. Naturally, this doesn't remove the deck from the meta entirely. Instead, it offers a new deck-building challenge 
challenge to storm aficionados. But remember, while the people who are involved with ban list decisions aren't the same people who designed the cards, they are all part of the same company. So on one side of the building, Storm was a definite mistake, but on the other side, it still needs to be kept around for the sake of the format. Just imagine the outcry if they decided to ban every single Storm card at once. This precedent leaves designers in a difficult position. Brian Tinsman was the designer who created Storm all those years ago. And though he's since left the company, his name is attached to this piece of magic history. That gives designers of today a dire warning. If you make a mistake, it might never be forgotten, and it can never be undone. Or can it? In the history of broken mechanics, there is perhaps only one that was actually so broken as to warrant a total overhaul to its rules. I'm talking, of course, about Companions from last year's Ikoria. The original Companion mechanic allowed you to start with the card outside the game, available to be cast once per game, provided your deck met the card's requirements. Companions were inspired by the Commander format giving you a kind of pseudo-commander in a non-singleton deck. Of course, anyone who's played Commander can tell you that the only reason it works is because you have to play a singleton deck, with the Commander providing some much-needed consistency. In a format as consistent as Standard, or any other format for that matter, it was almost inevitable that disaster would strike. On June 1st, 2020, less than one month after the set's release, Companions received an unprecedented functional errata, modifying their rules for power reasons. This wasn't just a ban. Companions were completely overhauled. Now, instead of casting them from outside the game, you had to pay three generic mana to add it to your hand. This had the intended effect of slowing down the decks that saw fit to use it, but at what cost? I want to stress that unlike bans, this had never happened before. This wasn't like Storm, where a broken concept led to a powerful deck that could be kept in check with bans. This was an entire concept for the game that was deemed too powerful to continue. So why did they decide to take this unprecedented step? The main reason that functional errata like this is avoided is a desire to ensure physical cards reflect their mechanical function. After all, Tarmogoyf was never supposed to have one more toughness than power. That was a mistake added in development. It would be easy to change the official online card reference to the quote-unquote correct toughness, but then every existing copy of that card would be wrong. Imagine the confusion that might lead to. All right, I'm going to tap two and play a Tarmogoyf. Uh-huh, cool. So I have two card types in my graveyard and you have one. That makes it a 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> no, it's a 3-4. No, it's a 3-3. Three, three. It says plus one right there. Oh, that? They changed that. You're making that up. Now they change cards all the time. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and cast Shock for eight damage, I guess. In this regard, there's nothing that really makes companions any different. The physical versions of these cards now have incorrect reminder text. But one of the reasons they probably felt like they could do it was that most players weren't using physical cards. Thanks to the increased popularity of Magic Arena, not to mention the global pandemic closing most local game stores around the world, most players experienced the companion errata digitally, where the change would have been as simple as modifying a few lines of code. What's more, when you look at the cards on arena, there's no evidence that there ever was a change. I see this in part as a reaction to Magic's competitors. On Hearthstone, Legends of Rune Terra, and other digital card games, it's become common practice to modify what cards actually do. Rather than just banning or restricting cards, this gives developers the opportunity to keep cards relevant while buffing or nerfing their effects. This would normally be something Magic can't get away with, since it's primarily a physical game. At least for now. And while the bans of Lurus in Legacy and Vintage a month earlier tried to deal with the issue through the traditional channels, it speaks volumes that Companions proved to be such a problem that they took this extra step. I'm not entirely against this kind of change. In some ways, it's preferable to banning literally every Companion in literally every format. But I do foretell some issues pertaining to the Legacy of Magic. And no, I'm not talking about the Legacy format. 
I said earlier that Storm is part of Magic's history and it can't be erased, but that also means it can be celebrated. We already talked about Weather the Storm as an attempt to make a new Storm card that wasn't broken. It fit into Modern Horizons' general theme of exploring and remixing mechanics from Magic's past. This isn't the only example in recent years of designs that pay tribute to Storm. There's also Crow Storm from Unstable, which pays homage both to the classic Storm Crow and to its namesake mechanic. We can also return to Black Border, a previous standard, in fact, for the final example. Thousand Year Storm from Guilds of Ravnica is a six-mana enchantment that effectively gives all your instants and sorceries Storm. Well, a slightly weaker version of Storm. Of course, because it's six mana, it doesn't see any play in the actual Storm decks. But it gives Commander or Pioneer players the opportunity to interact with this famous mechanic in a way that isn't totally broken. So we have references to Storm on cards from 15 years after the mechanic premiered. Which leads us to the big question. 15 years from now, will anyone remember Companions the same way? It comes down to this. Mistakes happen all the time. Designers are only human, and on some level, mistakes like Storm and Companions are inevitable. But when they happen, they can't be swept aside or brushed under the rug. Maybe they need to be banned to keep formats in check. I understand that. But when they do, they're a part of magic now. And in some ways, I think we owe them the right to be remembered.